Could you hear me? All right. Let's call this meeting uh, to order here for Wednesday, May 18th, 2016. Thank you all for coming. Um, uh, the first thing we'll do is have the roll call. Mike? Commissioner Viers? Here. Commissioner Morrill? Here. Commissioner Mee? Here. Commissioner Kelly? Here. President Hodgkinson? Here. <coughs> all right. I understand we have two presentations. We do. We have uh, the summer event schedule presentation, is that correct? And who is making that presentation? Christina. Christina. Come on down. Uh, the special events team is gearing up for another fantastic summer of events at the Wheaton Park District. Two weeks from tomorrow kicks off Taste of Wheaton with our four-day event featuring live entertainment, carnival, food vendors, business expo, art and craft fair, kids activities, a bike valet, and more. Uh, we will kick it off with a ribbon cutting on Thursday evening at 530 if any of the commissioners would like to join us on stage. All details can be found at tasteofwheaton.com. Do not forget to mark your calendar for the other great upcoming events we have this summer. On June 18th, Fisherama and the Patonk Court opening at Northside Park. July 3rd, Wheaton Fireworks. July 4th, the Wheaton Independence Day Parade. July 11th, 18th, and 25th, Music Mondays in the Park over at Memorial Park. July 21st, Casley Zoo Uncorked. August 6th, the Wheaton Brew Fest. And August 26th and 27th, Shakespeare in the Park. In addition to all the special events we are hosting this summer, we know there are a lot of residents celebrating graduations, birthdays, anniversaries, family reunions, weddings, and other types of gatherings. We encourage everyone to consider your Wheaton Park District parks and facilities when looking for venues to host your events. We offer a fantastic park settings, turnkey event rooms, birthday party packages, pool parties, and even evening driving range parties. Whether it's a large corporate event or a small family get-together, the Wheaton Park District has something for all of your celebrations. More information can be found under Park and Facility Rentals at WheatonParkDistrict.com. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Christian. Any questions, comments? Okay, and then we also are having the park, or is that the park that we, facility? That we're both park, park. Okay, great. Um, Donna, are there, is there anyone signed up to give public input? Okay, thank you very much. All right, uh, could I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Uh, a approval of the disbursements totaling one million fifty-one thousand fifty-two cents for the period beginning April 13, 2016, and ending May 10, 2016, and B approval of the meeting minutes from April 20, 2016. Second. Second. All right. We have a motion by me and a second by Moral to approve the consent agenda. Any changes? Uh, roll call. Commissioner Viers? Yes. Commissioner Schobel? Yes. Commissioner Morrill? Yes. Commissioner Mee? Yes. Commissioner Kelly? Yes. President Hodgkinson? Yes. All right. Next uh, is the uh, presentation on the Wheat Wheaton Park District Strategic Plan. Mike, why don't you give us the opening for this and then we'll I'd introduce the staff. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners and all of our friends at home. In 2009, a Wheaton Park District leadership team of eight individuals created the strategic plan that would set the course for the next five years. From 2010 to 2014, Park District staff and board members implemented this plan in everyday work activities, programs, and events. Over the months between late 2014 through 2015, an update to this plan was created to guide our continuous improvement. In order to gain insight from many staff members within the district and create, a stronger, create stronger alignment between the departments, the district's first seven charter groups were created. A charter is a comprehensive project plan designed to drive continuous improvement for an identified area of the park district. Each group is comprised of five to ten full-time and part-time staff members from all walks of Park District life. Vice President Morrill and President Hodgkinson were active participants in initial planning and then joined their own charter teams. For 2016 through 2020, seven initiatives were identified and put into charter form. Our charter teams include measurement survey and analysis team, board partnership and community engagement team, internal communication excellence team, Program and Recreation Resources Team, Facility Planning for Profit and Sustainability Team, Greening Your Park District Team, 
and the Parks and Open Space Master Plan team. A 2010 through 14 plan wrap-up team was also formed to serve as a bridge between the two plans. It's uh, now my pleasure to introduce uh, Megan Rate, who will kick off the presentation. Uh, and we have uh, seven individual staff members, each representing each charter team, to provide you with uh, a, the uh, overall summary of this next five-year plan. Thank you. And, and Megan, before you get started, go ahead, before you get started, why don't we, since we're going to have individual presentations from each of these different teams, why don't we go ahead and ask questions while the person's still up at the podium? Is that agreeable with everybody? Okay. Okay, Megan, go ahead. Thank you very much. Good evening, commissioners. We'd like to thank you for the opportunity to present you the 2016-2020 Park District Strategic Plan to you tonight. Over the course of the past year, full-time and part-time staff members from various parts of the Park District have come together to focus on seven charters. These seven charters are the backbone to our Park District and where we see the district progressing in the next five years. We provided you with a handout that gives you a brief <coughs> synopsis on one side of each of the charters, and then on the uh, opposite side, it gives you the project year plan one, so you can follow along if you need to. Let me introduce Bruce Stoller, who will begin the presentation with the Measurement, Survey, and Analysis Charter. Thank you. All right, good, e good, good evening, everybody. Um, Megan said <clears throat> I am here to talk about the Measurement, Survey, and Analysis Charter. Um, we are the smallest team. Uh, Christina and I, a couple years ago, created a tiny little group of people. Uh, we handpicked them, a little horse trading in the uh, back rooms to get the people we wanted. Uh, we've got uh, a great group of people uh, that have an incredible set of skills that we, uh, we use quite a bit. Um, I want to give you some history about why we have this charter. Uh, the district for years has surveyed people. Uh, we've surveyed our staff, we've surveyed the community. A few years ago, we hooked up with the University of Illinois to do a community survey, uh, and then we followed that up with focus groups. A lot of you took part in. Um, and the findings there are the basis for a lot of what we've done in the Parks and Open Space Charter. Um, we've also done internal surveys. We've had focus groups, and we had Denison do employee stuff. Um, we took that information and did some stuff with it, didn't do, necessarily do a ton. Uh, I think the overall feeling was that the, the employees were given their feedback and we weren't necessarily following up like we should have. So moving <coughs> forward, we want to bring some consistency, bring a good deal of follow-up. Consistency-wise, U of I is coming back. You all are aware they're doing their uh, survey this summer. Uh, I'm sure we will follow up with some focus groups once we get the results. And uh, we'll be able to move forward in the future, hopefully with a plan that allows us to use them more often, uh, at least on a regular basis. Not annually, too expensive. Things don't change that much in a year. But uh, we'll be on a schedule so we can survey the community as we need to. With, uh, for our employees, we were able to partner with a professor at UIC who's going to be doing employee surveys every year. We've uh, just completed our second year of those. Uh, the results will be coming to us next month. Uh, the idea here is that we're able to get annual feedback from our staff that we'll be able to put together and pass out to the other groups. And that's kind of where our focus is going to be moving forward. Taking all this information, and it's huge piles of stuff, and looking through it, figuring out what's important to people in the community and in our staffs, and then passing that on to the appropriate charters so that they can do their work and move forward. In the end, it's all about making things better for our residents, for our staff, and hopefully for you, to, so you have a better understanding of what everybody's looking for and uh, can make easier decisions. Thank you very much. Questions, Questions for Bruce? No, I'll, I'll look forward to the results of the surveys. Great. So I think up next is uh, Margie Wilhelmy to talk about the board partnership and community engagement. Thanks, Bruce. Good evening. Um, I'm here representing the engagement charter, otherwise known as the E-Team. Our charter is made up of many team members across the district. We chose the name E-Team 
not only because it represents engagement, but also because it represents every stakeholder, which includes the board, our partners, and the community. The charter purpose is to create and maintain efficient and consistent communication with the board, the community, and our partners. We are very proud of the great programs, events, facilities, and services that we offer. So it is important that we keep our stakeholders engaged and informed of what we do. Through the efforts of our charter, we will review and strengthen our current partnership programs sorry, and extend our resources to improve our communication to these stakeholders. We have divided our charter into three committees. One committee will be focusing on board engagement, one on partnership, and the last on the community. The board committee will take a look at weekly and monthly reporting and how we can maximize our use of the transparency portal. The partnership committee will explore our outreach of the leadership program, develop a partnership, a formal partnership template, and organize a plan for regular reporting to our partners. Lastly, the community committee will evaluate how staff currently promotes their programs and services. In the near future, Staff will complete a 10-question survey on what methods they are currently using to market their programs. This way we can share those offerings and those ideas with others across the district. Thank you for your time this evening. And does anyone have questions? Questions for Margie? <clears throat> Margie, how do you, how will you, um, um, I know it's good to look, be looking inside at how we're doing this kind of thing. When your committee was reviewing this stuff, were you looking outside at other methods that other uh, agencies, municipal bodies were doing for engaging partners, that kinds of thing? We have looked out to other districts to see what they're currently using for partnership engagement. It's a little similar of what we're already doing, but I think we can expand on it. have not looked into board yet, but that's probably what we'll dig deeper into as we move on. And the transparency portal... Um, will the community be able to send us all their ideas that they want uh, through that as well, too? We've talked a little bit about a, um, almost like a chat with the, the commissioners on the transparency portal, so then they could actually submit ideas and then utilize that as a platform for us to be able to get back to them versus just an email. Okay. Okay. Questions? Other questions? Mm -mm. Okay. Thank you, Margie. Thank you. Who's Thanks. next? Oh, Raphael. Good evening. I will be speaking today about the internal communications excellence. First, the internal communications team is composed of 14 amazing members representing both full-time and part-time employees from every division in the district. We are working very hard to develop communication and training methods that will benefit the district both now and also in the future. We are developing consistent communication practices that are focused and efficient for all employees to be heard. We are creating an agency of positive behaviors and attitudes and every facet of the district is one of our goals that we are striving for also. By improving our communications protocols, our messages will be very consistent, provide better feedback, and increase trust and efficiency agency-wide, which improves employee satisfaction. OneNote is a program in the Microsoft Bundle that is a communication and collaboration tool used currently at the Community Center front desk. It is a very successful tool also. This will be rolled out to all divisions and implemented district-wide. The surveys, as also Bruce spoke about the UIC and the Denison, the staff has participated in and will be analyzed and new methods will be used for improving communication based on those results throughout the year. Creating a consistent onboard procedure for full-time, part-time, and seasonal employees will be also implemented. This will consist of training in in-district mission and values, the role of commissioners, and an overview of departments and facilities to name just a few practices that are being developed. All employees with supervisory responsibilities will be trained with core capabilities, which include accountability, communication, financial responsibility, customer service, just to name a few. 
One note will be evaluated and expanded to include field use to make any changes to increase efficiencies and training procedures also. Through advisory meetings, survey results and follow up after the onboarding practices, employees will provide necessary feedback to keep communication lines open and active. The critical component for the onboarding process is consistency, making sure everyone is getting the same training district wide. It is important to all of our managers and supervisors to be trained in these leadership skills and develop the core capabilities set forth by the cultural alignment team. Thank you. Questions? Questions? Well, None for me. Yeah, actually, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, um, yes, sir. So I'm curious about what uh, policies or procedures might be in place for employees to communicate outside of the chain of command, outside of through the executive team here at the Park District, maybe directly to the elected officials. Are there uh, is training in place for in the onboarding process? Is there are a uh, procedures in place for people who might want to skip their supervisor and go directly to maybe an elected official? That is a very good point. Uh, we. We, we have spoken a little bit about the way things will be situated with, but I don't think that we have went to that point that there is a spot where they can go over. This is mostly like for communication just in general, the, f the focus. But if anyone would like to help out with... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Um. <laughs> oh, here comes the executive team to explain how yeah, this works. No, uh, the, it's, that's a, what a great question, John. And, you know, as far as we operate a, an open door policy here, and I think, you know, with actually the, the only board member here today that was involved with hiring me is Commissioner Schobel. And one of the things that they spoke to me about at that time, and I know every board member agrees with this, is, you know, Employees should feel they have the free ability to speak with commissioners uh, anytime they feel like it. Uh, you know, it's always, it's always nice and polite that managers don't get surprised by any issues that they may not have an opportunity to fully resolve. But, you know, we're not, we're not afraid of that dialogue. We would encourage it. Um, and the situations that create more of a, a risk, a, you know, a risky environment, there's protocols established within our personnel policy manual that, you know, that covers if there's a problem with, somebody has a problem with me and I run the place, it, they are directed by their manual that governs their rights as employees to go to the board president. So that's in place. Um, the rest of it is, you know, we're all, we're all one team here. Um, if, if there's an employee that feels they need you know, outside of the protocols we establish, which is essentially a, will be like a social contract for all employees, they, they have every right in the world to do that. So I'm not sure it's something we really want to manage other than encouraging open communication. I think that uh, we want to encourage the staff to follow a reasonable chain of command. It's, I certainly would. If there's a problem issue, it needs to be taken up in a chain of command process and I, rather and than I, jumping you know, from one to the next to the next, because if there's a problem issue and it was, it would be brought to my attention, I'd be asking, have you brought it to your supervisor's attention? And, and I, I, I would agree I, and I'd echo that and say that uh, it depends on how we handle it as a board member. Our, our responsibility is to our executive director, and so if staff have a problem, we need to discuss it with the executive director. So, but the staff have a right to talk to any talk to us. I'd rather you talk to us than somebody on the street. <laughs> Correct. Thanks, Thank you, man. Okay. okay. Oh. Oh, yes. Christine Hallen will be the next representative for the program and creation services. All right, Christine. Kristen. Good evening, mm -hmm. Commissioners. I'm Kristen Hanlon, representing the Program and Recreation Services Charter. This charter consists of 12 creative and motivated full and part-time staff members representing the recreation, special facilities, and parks departments who work in collabor collaborative environment to help shape the future direction of the district. Together, we have narrowed down three main objectives in order to secure the progression and success of our recreation programming <coughs> efforts. <coughs> The strategic direction that we have taken is to develop customers for life. We plan to do this by providing programs for all age segments. Our goal, our goal is to have people 
involved from an early age and continue to participate throughout their lives. Our strategic objective is to increase the number of programs offered to the number of programs executed, essentially reducing the cancellation rate of our programming. It's our goal to maintain an agency cancellation rate of 25% or less, and we're currently accomplishing that with an overall rate of 24% for this past winter 2016 season. Um, our main focus in this charter is to develop and market programs based on community needs <coughs> to promote lifelong leisure and interests. Creating programming opportunities for our patrons to be active at all ages will help promote lifelong leisure and align with community needs. Our charter team has broken into three subcommittees to better concentrate on how to do this. Cancel cancellation rate, lost revenue analysis, demographics, age segmentation analysis, and recommendations, and guidelines for eliminating, introducing, and expanding new programs. In our year one objectives, each subcommittee has developed their own efforts towards achieving our goal. We'll provide a quarterly analysis of the number of programs offered, number of programs held, and the number of programs canceled specifically by program area. For example, the dance program or early childhood Cosley Zoo program and so on. A breakdown will also be provided with the number of programs offered, the number of sessions offered within each program area, and the percentage of classes offered in the following age categories. Adult, zero to six years old, seven to 11 years old, 12 to 17 years old, all ages such as canoeing, martial arts, music lessons, and then family programs such as parent and child classes. We've also designed a thoughtful process for a new program development, program expen expansion, and program elimination for managers to consider, which includes the following questions to be answered. Can a top performing program be expanded? Offered in a new different location or maybe to a similar audience? Perhaps a different skill level? Do we have the time and resources available to make those quality programs? There are many more questions that we could ask, and this isn't necessarily a checklist, but more of a thoughtful process for some of the things that we're considering. In the upcoming years, we'll be examining our cancellation rate by providing an initial quarterly report that is broken down by program area to show each specific cancellation rate. If a specific program area goes above the 25% mark, then further analysis will be done. Analysis to be sure all residents are being served will be done, and that will include 2014 Wheaton demographic estimates, Town Square 2013 estimated demographics in a one, three, and five mile radius population, and enrollment projections in the school districts 287 and 89. Thank you. Any questions? Questions for Kristen. Kristen, is your group the largest of the groups? Um, possibly. Possibly. We, I think we might be either tied for the largest or <laughs> the largest. <laughs> um, the, uh, the programs, um, the, the, the uh, uh, what's the word I want to use, that magazine, but the, uh, the, brochure. the brochure that goes out every year, what's, what's the future of that look like? Is it going to be, continue to be a mail piece into the indefinite future, or do you see a time when it's all digital? That's something that we're looking for um, in year two, year three, and so on. Um, things that <clears throat> have been considered is briefing it down a little bit, um, other things have been postcard. We don't see it going away completely because it is the main, the main uh, marketing tool um, to get people to go online. When they open it, they see a program, they want to know more about it, then they'll visit our website to learn more about it and register. Um, but it's something that we're looking for in the future to see other options. What, what do you do in regards to following trends and seeing what's going on not only in Illinois but throughout the country as far as programming? Um, another thing that we have been doing is looking at other districts, um, some of the programming that we offer, pop culture, stuff like that. Um, it's another thing that we're looking for in the future. Right now we're just kind of con um, concentrating on a smaller scheme and then branching out further down. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, and feedback. Um, Kristen, I've got a couple mm -hmm. questions. Um, okay. <clears throat> when you are looking at other entities, are those entities also, besides park districts, are they also things like what the library is doing or what not-for-profits are doing or those kinds of things to see what kind of trends that they are, that they may be capturing that, that other park districts are not capturing? Mm -hmm. Are you are you looking at those kinds of things? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we could 
we could do more of that, I think, but it is something that's on the agenda. I mean, I, 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 I mean, I think the Wheaton Public Library, since they started doing their little brochure, has a lot of attendees to a lot of different programs that, you know, there are across areas that maybe park districts haven't thought about before. So, mm -hmm. um, also, what do you, what is your group thinking about trying to get to more of the? Um, I think 25 or some odd percent of our school population is in a lower economic lunch program or what have you. What are we doing to try to reach out to get to those types of programs? And how are those addressed in some of these goals? Um, because they may not be revenue providers. Right. I honestly am not sure about that answer, but I could meet with the committee and we could get an it's answer just for you. something for a future yeah, discussion. Yeah, something to I'd discuss. Like to... We can make a note of that and definitely yeah. get answers on that. Yeah. I mean, it seems like when we've looked at the scholarship rates, sometimes they're going down and we'd like to see them. You know, we know that there are kids who could use them too, and, and you know, maybe there's a different way we could be doing something or something that we're not offering that we could be. Mm -hmm. Also, um, uh, for a couple of years, I've wanted to know how how the school demographics matched our demographics in terms of the number of programs. So mm -hmm. I'm really happy to hear, you know, let's look at the number of preschoolers so we can figure out do we need more preschool programs, less preschool programs, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. So I think that's really good. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Thank you. Other feedback? Oh, next up is Andrea. <laughs> Andrea? Okay. <clears throat> Thanks, Kristen. Good evening. I'm Andrea Chapetta. I'm here to, I have the pleasure of representing an awesome team and a charter like no other. Facility planning and profit and sustainability is quite a mouthful, but let me give you an analogy that'll make this more clear as what we're trying to accomplish. We like to think about our charter the same way you would your own personal checkbook. You want to increase what you're bringing in and you want to decrease what's going out. To accomplish this, we've outlined the following. Basically, these two statements you see here are explaining what we'd like the district to become more self-supporting, meaning we want to reduce our reliance on property taxes. In general, we're already doing a great job at this, but there's always room for improvement. Therefore, we need to find new ways to not only make money, but also save it. Let's take a look at how we plan on making these goals become a reality. As seen in our opportunity statement, our plan is to do a careful analysis of each facility's operations. Doing this would include a variety of tasks that we've mapped out in our very first year. In order to help foster a district-wide culture change, we have developed a multi-step approach. First, we're gonna begin by amending each facility's vision and mission statements. By making these modifications, we hope to promote a culture of profit and sustainability. Next, we're going to work closely with staff on identifying new revenue streams and exchanging ideas on how to reduce expenses. One way we'd like to accomplish this is by circulating a questionnaire to gain a better understanding how each department operates. Here's what the upcoming years have in store for us. To start, we'd like to, uh, we'd like to analyze the results from the survey to determine how current practices affect our sustainability. Next, we will evaluate expenses looking for areas where savings can be realized. Finally, we will research district-wide joint purchasing agreements in hopes of increasing our buying power and reducing our overall expenses. While our method may not be exactly what you use on your own personal finances, the goal is the same. We'd like to increase what's coming in and reduce what's going out. Do you have any questions? And John, you're working with this group too? Yeah, this is the only committee here that has uh, two Thornridge Falcons on it. That's right. <laughs> 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 That's in Indiana, isn't it? So it must be a really good group. Yeah, Qu absolutely. Questions or comments for Andrea? Thank you, Andrea. Thank, Thank you. you, Andrea. That's very good. I'm sure taxpayers are happy about this committee. This I would group. hope so. I would hope so. Rely the tax. <laughs> yeah. Don't good. hold me to that on the next ta tax levy, though. <laughs> Give us some time to work through it. Yeah. Um, I'd like to introduce Dan Angie Dash with the Greening team. Hello, my name is Angie Dosh, and I am here to talk about the Greening Your Park District Charter. Um, as our team of 
representatives are up there. We are 15 members strong from part-time and full-time members of the Park District throughout the district. Um, our strategic goals of our charter is to minimize the environmental <coughs> impact that we as a Park District have. Um, and we also want to educate our internal and our external customers on what it is that they can do and what we can do to be green. Um, we aim to implement practices that reduce our waste and that we increase our use of green products. Um, the opportunity that we see for that is that as a large organization, uh, we can make a tremendous environmental impact uh, with the products that we use um, and the way that we choose to run our facilities. Um, while many environmental improvements have been made district-wide, there's always room to do more. Um, for the first year of our charter, we identified three work groups uh, to accomplish our goals. Um, those work groups are the green initiatives, and they are compiling a list of all of the green initiatives that are going on throughout the park district currently. Um, the members of the green or the earth flag group will explore and pursue the opportunity to acquire the earth flag from SCARES, which is a local conservation organization. And the education group will develop a staff and patron education materials. Um, in the next five years, um, look for us to be educating the patrons and the staff uh, as a priority and uh, as we implement implement new environmental sustainable solutions. Watch for green tips in the monthly e-blast that goes out to all the Wheaton Park District residents as well as staff meetings and um, outreach programs to teach people how to live more environmentally friendly. Thank you. And do you have any questions for me? Questions? <coughs> Angie. Keep it up. Uh, Angie, is, the, uh, is it going to be part of your your domain to publicize the uh, suggestions or the tips or is that something that you're working with external communications with uh, how is that going to be done like I guess I'm getting at things like signage and improving those kinds of things around the district yeah that is something that our charter is going to work at um, one of the groups that we've identified is an education group and so the things that they'll be doing is um, doing those these blasts so they'll be doing that but also making sure that our signage is the same throughout the park district so that when our participants come to the soccer fields, they're able to identify where the recycling opportunities are as well as when they go to the park district um, or to Cosley Zoo. Okay, great, good. I'm really excited about this group. I'm really happy. It's your Thanks. favorite, Jane? It's not my favorite, but it's really a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank and you. I'm going to introduce Steve Hinchy with the uh, Parks and Open Space Charter. Good evening. I'm Steve Hinchy, Superintendent of Planning, speaking on behalf of the uh, Parks and Open Space Charter. Well, what, what would a strategic plan be uh, for a park district without taking a look at our parks? After all, parks are what defines our agency. It forms the foundation of everything else we do. The Parks and Open Space Charter ask the question, what does thoughtful park planning look like? And we came up with the following list. Well-planned parks and open spaces benefit the community and our patrons. Maximize potential for staff to utilize them for our programs. Thoughtfully designed and easier to maintain. Will help map out long-term budget and aid the district as we pursue outside funding such as grants. Consider environmental impacts and strive to improve the environment. And finally, parks and well thought out parks and open spaces uh, will maximize the potential for our patrons to utilize them for programs by making patrons aware of the opportunities and amenities afforded to them at our parks. The aim of the parks and open space portion of the plan has a large focus on uh, physical improvements to our parks. But more than that, we seek to provide an environment where stakeholders are highly engaged, very satisfied, 
and aware of the opportunities and amenities afforded to them within our park district, as stated in the strategic direction. The Wheaton Park District has done many things concerning engaging uh, both patrons and staff. Uh, we've had conversations uh, concerning the various parks and facilities uh, through surveys and focus groups, as well as uh, workshops with our staff. All this input has been compiled into the strategic plan document you have before you. You received a one-page summary, which Megan highlighted, uh, and at the bottom of that is uh, the Parks and Open Space Charter. I see that as this is a kind of a, a foundation uh, which all the other charters are built up from. As you read through the opportunity statement, you'll likely recognize elements of other charters. Good park planning requires all these elements to be working together. The opportunity statement acknowledges that uh, community ch needs change over time and uh, we will need to continue to seek feedback from our residents and from staff. When something breaks or needs to be replaced because it's lived its useful life, it's easy to, to focus on fixing that one thing. Uh, but let's not uh, sacrifice the long-range goal for the immediate. Uh, this plan really encourages us to st take a step back and look at the whole. A thoughtful approach to planning will look at ways to address both our immediate needs and our long-range needs while improving how the site is able to be programmed and maintained. As I stated before, focus groups and workshop meetings and surveys were all conducted to gather input from patrons, staff, and participants. This input was compiled into a fairly extensive list of projects for each of our parks and some uh, that apply district-wide. This list needed to be prioritized. Each project was looked at in terms of its priority, budget, and complexity. Each project was assigned a priority ranging from must do, should do, or could do. The must do's and should do's kind of rose to the top as you would imagine. Uh, each project was also looked at in terms of cost. Now we don't have exact estimates on all these, these projects, but we did kind of put them in different ranges. So we thought about whether a project might be tens of thousands of dollars versus hundreds of thousands of dollars. And finally, uh, each project was looked at in terms of its complexity. Uh, as you're aware, some projects require pretty involved permitting, uh, while other projects are fairly simple. The end result was projects that were high priority, low cost, and easy to do were at the top of our list, while uh, pri with lower priority, more costly, and complex projects appear further down the list. This will be a helpful tool as we uh, move into our, each of our budgeting years over the next five years. And it's also a helpful tool when we go to, to look for outside funding such as grants to, to be able to say that maybe some of these big complex projects do appear in our master plan. The Parks and Open Space Master Plan uh, should not be viewed as a, as a to-do list uh, but more as a, a roadmap or a guide to the next five years. To bring every single project to 100% completion would be ambitious, if not impossible. The goal is not to, to necessarily finish everything on the list, but to have them in one of the, the four following stages. Either we're researching it, planning it, so maybe we've hired an engineer, uh, and are, are developing plans. Maybe we're permitting it. Uh, some, some projects take a while to get through permitting or it's completed. During the research phase into certain projects, we may discover that now isn't the right time to move forward with a project. 
Uh, and there will be several projects that are, are in the feasibility and planning stages at the end of the five years. But this will be a, a good first step as we move into a subsequent plan. As the plan is implemented, we need to continue to communicate to ensure stakeholder satisfaction. We also need to be sure to market these efforts to everyone to make them more aware. Uh, one point that came out of our, our focus groups was that we need to, to toot our own horn a little bit more. There's a lot of great things that the Park District does in our community, and uh, we just need to, to make everyone aware and get the word out a little more. Uh, in an effort to improve communication about our capital projects, a capital improvements page has been added to our website. Targeted neighborhood surveys are often linked from this page, and uh, we added a suggestion box to this page. Uh, we also continue to work toward increasing the number of neighborhood meetings we have with uh, residents around certain parks where we have little more significant projects planned. This strategic plan document uh, was created by staff from all levels across all departments of the district. We're very invested and very proud to present this plan to you this evening. We didn't hire a consultant from the outside to create a plan that's just going to sit on the shelf and collect dust. This is a plan that is meant to be used and referenced often. Each year, we will take a look back at what we've accomplished, measure our progress, map out a course for the year ahead, listen to feedback, and adjust the plan as needed. I find the words of Daniel Burnham, a famous planner from the 1800s, appropriate to consider as we close out our presentation. Burnham took the lead on many master plans for some of our nation's large cities, such as Chicago and Washington, D.C. He also was the architect of several famous buildings. You've likely heard the quote, make no little plans, often attributed to Burnham. However, this little soundbite misses the full impact of what he said. Recently, I found the full quote. Make no little plans. They have no magic to stir men's blood and probably themselves will not be realized. Make big plans. Aim high in hope and work, remembering that a noble, logical diagram once recorded will never die, but long after we are gone, be a living thing asserting itself with ever-growing insistency. Remember that our sons and our grandsons are going to do things that will stagger us. Let your watchword, watchword be order and your beacon beauty. The Wheaton Park District has been in existence for nearly a century now, and it will continue to be an integral part of our community well into the future. Park board members, you are helping to steward our parks for future generations. Your support of this planning is key as we look towards the next five years and beyond. Thank you for your time this evening. I'd like to open it up to any questions. John. I just have a comment. I would say that more than any other committee, this one excites me because uh, you get to use your imagination and what you're thinking about doing. Uh, when I think about what those two ice sheets are going to be like at Central Athletic Complex next winter and how that's going to change the character of downtown, I mean, that's a real impact that the park district should be having uh, on everybody who visits Wheaton who lives here. So that's pretty exciting. I would say go ahead and use your imagination and, and come up with whatever you think sounds like a good idea. We'll do what we can afford. <laughs> but we don't want to. We don't want to nip your your uh, brainstorming in the bud. Go ahead and think your big thoughts and dream your big dreams. And we're excited to have that come in front of us. Any other comments, Ray? Yeah, I I would just want to compliment the staff on on this presentation and the master plan. And and I really am excited about the fact that 
all departments were involved, both full-time and part-time uh, people were involved, and uh, surveys and resident input and focus groups were all part of an integral part of developing this plan. Uh, so I congratulate you all on it. I, I'm, I think it's fantastic. I think we as a board need to <coughs> accept the plan at least uh, so that we have some recognition of the fact that, that we indeed are, are behind it. Gary? Mike, uh, I know that uh, all of the staff has worked really hard on this uh, but through the focus groups, you know, on the plan. So, you know, I want to commend all for your efforts. And I think Ray has a good point, uh, makes a good point about, you know, an acceptance of this plan. Thank you. If I may, there are, there's a volume of information that supports the high level overview that has been provided uh, by these 70 people behind you, uh, behind me rather. Um, we want to provide that volume for those of you who are so detail oriented that you want to dig into the pages related to each charter that's been explained in a simple paragraph. Every single park map that Steve and his team put together were coming your way. Um, we would love to see that acceptance in general uh, come at the next meeting. After you have the opportunity to dig into the details, should you wish, keep in mind this is a five-year plan. We've already accomplished so much, and it will evolve, as Steve indicated, over time. And what we require is an open mind from all of us, including the board, and support of our common, <laughs> our common goals. Uh, and we thank you. And I would like to honor and recognize the people behind me for a job well thank done. You. Um, I just wanted to say that this is such a, 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 a wonderful reception from all of you to, to make the point of being here tonight, not only to hear the presentation, but to support it with all of your time and energy and efforts in putting this all together. We do realize that this has taken a lot of time, that it has been a lot of reflection, and it is going to be a very reflective and, I think, responsive document to the people of Wheaton. And so we congratulate you all. Thank you so much. All right. Good job. Thank you. Um, shall we? Shall we move? Would you guys like to stay for the rest of the meeting? It's going to be about thirty seconds long. So. <laughs> um, next, we have the um, uh, bids for the installation of the speed tables that we're going to put at the community center. Uh, is there a motion? I move to accept the bid from Abbey Paving in the amount of seventy-five. Hundred dollars for the installation of speed tables in the parking lot at the community center. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second by Moral and me. Yes. Speed tables are speed bumps. Speed bumps. The wide ones. A little the more wide, than. They're the little more than ones. speed bumps. Yeah, yeah. Terry. Question for you, Mike. Mike, what's the backdrop on this? Have we had any incidents, any safety-related incidents, and/or complaints about the cut-through? Uh, yes, uh, all of the above. Uh, staff, uh, in particular, at the community center, and as articulated through our safety committee, which meets similar to this format uh, with representatives from the entire park district. Um, there's there's near misses. There uh, is uh, driving too fast. It, it's all happening, and I think we've been lucky. Obviously, freak accidents can happen, but I think, in general, spending a little bit of money to slow people down in the parking lots while not eliminating Rob's team from the ability to maintain it in all seasons is, is a smart move. Um, I, I think it, it, it at times achieves a little bit of public danger in how fast people drive through there, and there are... There are cuts through to different areas, either Blanchard or into Town Square. Those were designed. They're there. Um, people before us put them there. However, we would like to add a little bit of, of uh, a reminder uh, to folks that, you know, there's not only, you know, there's a million people a year walking through the doors of the community center. They got to park in that parking lot before they get there. So we want to slow everybody down a bit. We had any crashes and or police Reports. It, um, yes, I would be happy to provide no, just details. But had. yeah, we, we've over the 
near decade that I've been here, yeah, we've seen some 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 crashes. Um, they're not all. Sometimes there's a crash that comes from Blanchard and makes it into our parking lot. I remember that one. Other times, you know, there's there's um, uh, fender benders in the in the parking lot. Uh, the bottom line is, I, I think it's good business to just slow people down and and uh, nothing like a big bump in the road to slow you down. Other questions? Let's go ahead and do a roll call. Let's do a roll call. Commissioner Viers? Yes. Commissioner uh, Schobel? Yes. Commissioner Morrill? Yes. Commissioner Mee? Yes. Commissioner Kelly? Yes. President Hodgkinson? Yes. Thank you. And I would like to uh, commend staff uh, in their efforts to uh, secure a very, very uh, reasonable price for this installation. Um, the prices went up and went up beyond twenty thousand uh, dollars as as it as it uh, as it stands we're we're well under ten so nice job Great. next we have our uh, Cosley zoo report with us this evening we have uh, Cosley zoo director uh, Sue Walgren who is here to answer any questions you may have about your zoo report John um, so just for a point of further elucidation on this, uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of comments on the report. It was great, Sue. Uh, the uh, the one thing is that you know local government, there are a lot of direct benefits you get from participating with the park district and recreation or other programming using the parks. There are also diffuse benefits. Um, what we do for stormwater retention. And the other thing is conservation. And I was wondering if you could just talk a little bit about the program and the partnership we have with the Forest Preserve regarding the Blandings Turtles, what we do with that, and how we're uh, forwarding the cause of conservation with that. Yeah, we've been in that partnership since 2001. Um, we came into the partnership. They were um, – they realized that the population was going down in the county through their studies. At that time, the turtle was um, of concern, but it was not listed as endangered or threatened in the state. Um, it was shortly thereafter actually listed as threatened. And we came in because they were trying to do a Head Start program to, to take the little guys, juveniles, raise them up to a year of age and release them, and we're finding that they weren't surviving. They were getting eaten by predators. So they wanted to do a little lengthier rearing, so they asked us to come in uh, partnership with them. And we've had up to, we don't have as many right now, we've had up to 120 juveniles um, in a year where we rear those under controlled conditions, uh, temperature, day length, all that kind of thing. We're very careful about how we work with them. We've learned a lot working with them. We can't expose them to a lot of people, human contact, because we need them to be afraid of us. Um, and we uh, grow them at accelerated rate. We don't let them hibernate through the winter, and we release them as two-year-olds. And there's been, they're still releasing some still young. There's a lot of research still going on, um, spring release versus fall release, and we're learning a lot about diet. So it's, it's a constant learning process. Um, the Forest Preserve hatches them. We get them when they're young. Um, we also house a bunch of adults, sub-adults, for future breeding. Right now we don't breed in captivity, but eventually we're going to. Um, the turtle um, a few years ago was listed as endangered in the state, so it is it is a, an interest of species of interest in a lot of surrounding states. It's basically a Great Lake species. So um, we've released been part of releasing over 2,000 turtles since our involvement, and it's all released here in DuPage County. It's all highly regulated by the state where we release them, but. Uh, We've also taken part in some studies. We've done some trapping at the marsh and some other different things with interns. Uh, a lot of education, a lot of programming. We have Turtle Day coming up Saturday. That's one of the key things at Turtle Day. We talk about our program at that. Yes, sir. Good, Mark. Uh, I can tell you I, I, I enjoyed the report. Um, I can tell you what my mother-in-law's comments was. I had left this out on the kitchen table, and she just been happening over to help out Becky with the gardening. She went through this and said, this is phenomenal, comprehensive. She saw well thought through. And, and I got to thinking, do we have this on display in the, in the museum? So people go in and... Not the, it is, it is um, accessible on our website. Um, I, I'll I, put a hard copy out. That people okay, can absolutely. We can, it gives them an yeah. idea of how much we do. Sure. And, and the other thing, follow up on that. You said the state monitors where this, the, the turtles are, are released. Yes. Do they also monitor how they're... Sustaining? No. I mean, 
That's something that the Forest Preserve is starting to get more into that. They also they do radio tracking right now. They buy the telemetry equi equipment and tags. Uh, we put actually passive induction transmitters or pit tags in the turtles okay. before the release, kind of like you'd put in a dog for ID. Um, and they also use uh, radio they tracking. Don't monitor. Um, they do when they, they go out and do periodic trapping, and then they can assess, they can see if that's a turtle we've released. And they are seeing more evidence of their catching ones that have been released over the years. Um, but I know they're working with universities, um, and we try and offer help when we can, too, to go out and do tracking to really get a better handle on how, what kind of effect we are having long term. I really like that program, by the way. I mean, I've always been into nature, and that's right up my alley. So. It's been a great program for us, a real learning experience. So. Another thing we've learned about Mark Schobel tonight. He, he, All right, Ray. he likes turtles. <laughs> Ray, Thomas. Yeah, yeah I, 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 enjoy, I, I enjoyed. I enjoyed the report as well. It was very well done. Uh, I'd like to see in, maybe in the future uh, a section on challenges or future short-term goals. That would be helpful to to see, you know, what it is that you're looking forward to. In the immediate future, and a couple questions, and uh, don't you don't have to answer me now, but uh, uh, an update at some point on the master plan and the welcome center would be appreciated. Absolutely, Gary. Sue, so I echo Mark's sentiments about the comprehensive nature of the report. It was it was excellent, um, but you know I, I took out a couple of uh, of your comments out of your message, which I think you know says a lot. You know, in one case, you said we believe a lifetime of inspiration begins here. Uh, then further down, you said, you know, you may ask yourself, how much can a small zoo possibly do? The answer is more than you ever imagined. And then I look at the data and, you know, over the past five years, you know, we've uh, increased our uh, patronage by, you know, 55, 50,000 people um, and, you know, uh, up about 44 percent and then we talked uh, you talked about the educational program numbers you know expanded from you know uh, about 42,000 to about 80,000 and 89 percent increase you know in the number of people that are reached through the programming and you know I think that says it all um, you know uh, not to mention the fact that you know once again we mentioned the fact that you've achieved the AZA accredita accreditation again so congrats it's harder every time I know <laughs> good work thank you What's John? Yeah. So I just wanted to say, um, when I first got on the board, everybody was just used that Cosley Zoo was just something that operated in the red. And <laughs> when, when I, we'd, I'd ask questions when I first got on the board, well, why does, well, that's just the way it is. And I think when the board came back to you four or five years ago and said, we need to come up with a plan to at least break even, and the fact that in the last year we're up 20% from the year before in net revenue, I think you guys have done a tremendous job, and I think the offerings haven't declined in the least. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's excellent on your part and the people who fundraise, you know, the Kesley Foundation and the Park District itself that helps fundraise to turn this around in four or five years is phenomenal. I Thank you. I the Kool-Aid. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sue, I, I told you my comments beforehand. I'll, I'll just relate another story, though. I was in a locker room this week talking to a mom, and she's had five kids, and they've all been junior zookeepers at Causley Zoo, and she could not rave about it enough and what it's meant to her family to have that ability for her kids to get that exposure. Um, I'm going to um, echo what Ray said and encourage the Causley Foundation Board to look at the master plan and at least approve their concept so that we could uh, maybe begin discussing uh, how we're going to try to implement that. So we'll certainly pass that message along. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Okay. Good. Um, Mike, uh, department reports or yeah, a report from you? Okay. Um, I'll defer to the board for questions on the monthly department reports. I would like to recommend to your attention, if you need a new copy, emailed or hard copy of our personnel policy uh, review and update. We would love uh, to get this document approved at the June meeting, if at all possible. You want comments back by when? Um, well, I've told department heads I need theirs back by the end of the month. If you want, if you want to stretch that out, certainly. I, no, we I can serve at your call. Uh, so so comments. we would love an opportunity to to um, include or explain uh, 
um, why it wouldn't be include any comments from the board. Again, I can you know we have we have had this thing vetted by uh, uh, human resource attorneys through the management association as well as our professional staff. I believe it's ready to go. However, there are many walks of, of employment life sitting at this table right here, and the input is valuable from the board. Uh, as I stated earlier in the presentation, this this document is is an outline of of the rights of our employees that we have a responsibility to protect. So it's, a, it's an important deal. Uh, secondly, the, uh, the survey, the University of Illinois survey of the residents is closed. Um, I believe our, our response rate was somewhere uh, south of 20%, but not so far south that we will not have uh, an, a margin of error that is uh, of concern. Um, something on the order of, of 500 surveys were turned in. Um, I will double check my math. Robin and I are connecting on the preliminary results, um, and I'm very hopeful that we would be having a presentation uh, preliminarily at a subcommittee meeting uh, in June um, with hopefully a formal presentation to the community uh, at that board meeting, if not July, if there's uh, significant questions and follow up required. We're looking very, very much forward to, you know, to seeing those results. And to follow up, Commissioner Byers asked a question about the what's the state of the brochure. We we asked very pointed questions in that survey about that, and we're Margie especially I know is is very interested in um, in what the responses were that we can extrapolate to the entire population through that acceptable margin of error. So, um, we may not we may be surprised we may not. I, I would echo that um, the, the book is a lot shorter going out in the future. The book is still important. Direct mail, at the end of the day, social media is great. Direct mail works. That's all I have, unless there are any questions for the department Any, any other comments? Um, I had none. Okay, yeah. No, I had a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, I see, Mike, that we've got the 10th anniversary of the clubhouse. Coming up May 25th through June 1st uh, appears to be the event period. Are we doing anything special, Andy? Yeah, for that uh, that weekend, if you can believe it, the clubhouse is going to be 10 years old already, which is it's, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, we're going to have like sandwich specials on the menu. We're going to have uh, drink specials. So all going to kind of culminate around the 10th anniversary. So come on out and check it out. We're still going strong. Yes. Uh, I attended the uh, Fly a Kite event. Um, was that last Saturday or the Saturday before? Whose gig was that? That's what I thought. Christina. Christina, nice job. Well attended. Kites were flying all over the place. It was so windy. Uh, I know the one that my grandson and I were flying got tangled up with about 20 others. Um, <laughs> it was fun. Um, what else we got going here? Um, Mike, we did not have the post-prom events from the high schools this year other than St. Francis, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. I, Mary Beth, maybe you can help me, but I believe they're coming back That's what year. I'm sure that's what their wishes will be. Yeah, so this was an adventure elsewhere this year? That is correct. Okay, got it. Uh, Mike, I see that we there was a seminar on senior scams and fraud, fraud prevention uh, offered by the Page County Sheriff's Office. Was that at the Leisure Center? Anybody know? Yeah. Yes, it okay. was. And how was it the sheriff's office was involved rather than Wheaton PD? Um, actually, they have an outstanding program that's going on. And it's going to be oh, good. Yeah, I deliver those kind of programs up north. And um, so uh, those are always a benefit because there's so many scams out there. So it looked like it was well attended. Um, good deal. Uh, Rob, I just wanted to, are you here somewhere? There you are, buddy. I just want to commend, you know, you and the staff on, you know, taking care of, you know, all of the parks and our various recreation areas. I get compliments all the time about how good our park district looks and how well it's maintained. So keep it up, man. That's it for me. Okay, Terry. Ray, yeah, did you have Yeah, two things. Uh, congratulations to the staff on the uh, dedication of the uh, Mary Lepko Senior Center yesterday. It was very well put together and very well attended. Uh, good job, people. Um, 
I, I like seeing in the uh, Cosley Zoo report where uh, they talk about the different training and educational programs that the staff are able to go through. Uh, and I, I think that I'd, I'd like to see that from all the departments. You know, what kind of what kind of training opportunities are we giving the staff? I think I think it's important that that the staff provide are provided with that opportunity. Um, congratulations to the uh, Play for All. Foundation for and the staff who are involved in securing a hundred thousand dollars and maybe even more uh, donation for the sensory garden and playground. Uh, that was a that's a great great boon to the program and and maybe open up the doors for other people to want to get involved as well and move that project forward. Uh, read in the report about uh, uh, Daryl Houston uh, building relationships with West Chicago and Winfield, and I don't need a response right now, but at some point can we get an update of how, what are those relationships and how is he doing that? Uh, I, think that I think it is important that we build relationships with other communities to uh, help out both our programs and their programs. Um, and I like the idea that we're working with Central DuPage Hospital, uh, Northwestern Medicine, uh, for for our football program and and educating the coaches. I assume on the importance of um, concussions and et cetera. Uh, and I think we need to promote that to our residents and potential participants, so the parents know that 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 we do make an effort to you know provide the best care we can for the kids best training we can for the coaches. Uh, I like the idea of the, uh, from the Parks Department, uh, the Park Ownership Program. I think that's kind of cool that uh, having the staff uh, take ownership of different parks and I assume they are spending extra time there making sure that the parks look, look good and everything is safe and aesthetically pleasing. Uh, Staff's in the process of updating, replacing old and worn out uh, signs. I think that uh, we need to be talking to the city about the possibility of some electrical signs. Uh, wouldn't mind seeing electrical signs both at the Central uh, Athletic Complex, Arrowhead Golf Course, and certainly the Community Center and Rice Pool and Water Park. As of now, I don't think the ordinances allow it, but I think we should be talking to the city about you know what can we do about signage in the community on our behalf if i may write uh there's a there's a pretty decent sized list that new city manager dugan and myself are are going to be reviewing now that uh, the dust is settling around his ascension to the role so i'll keep you posted on some of those longer term items that we hope to see uh some updates on such as uh our our uh, intergovernmental agreement around permitting and the sign in the sign ordinance and things of that nature so um, stay tuned and I'll let you know how things go with Mike last last two things just looking forward to uh, some timeline or response to what are we going to do with the house at Arrowhead and what are we when and what are we going to do in regards to an RFP for our attorneys uh, those two things are still pending and uh, don't want us to forget about it that's all I have thank you um, Terry, because Ray brought up the idea of electrical signage, uh, Mike Arrowhead is obviously a county deal. What's do we have any feedback from them in regard to difficulty, acceptance? Whatever? I had asked uh, the planning team. I don't Steve or Brian. I don't know which one of you bird dogged this with the county <coughs> on what our or if we've done it yet. What's the process look like? What kind of timing issues? We maybe we can follow up. And in a written report, but I know they're they're looking into it, um, and they're going to let us know should the board decide they want to put some sort of signage there, what that process and permitting might look like, in, in a time frame standpoint and and uh, uh, ease of doing so. Maybe for a future buildings and grounds committee. Sure. Terry. One other failed mention. I want to commend Bruce and golf staff. Or golf rounds are up. Over last year, I know we had a good March, but it's been a kind of an up and down May. So you know, but we are up over last year at this time. So keep it up, and uh, 
For you, Andy, when are we getting those fancy little golf carts? What are they called? Hoverboards or what are they? Uh, we're still working out the details on that. So oh, okay. So it's been finalized as of I yet. thought that was a given. Well, something we've happened. We've been throwing some curveballs. Okay. I, I, I'm in dialogue with legal counsel concerning those items okay. um, that need I's dotted and T's crossed upon. So Good enough. It, the ball is in my court. It's uh, been ably handled by Bruce and, and Andy, but I had to get involved with the lawyers. So they're not coming in May as, uh, no. as initially projected. Okay. Thanks. Might be, June might be a better okay. estimate. Thanks. Okay. Other comments? All right. Thank you all for coming. Oh. Just one final comment. Um, just because we have so many staff here, uh, we're, we're, we've opened up our time to shine when, this, when the sun comes out and everybody is working so very hard. Um, and I, on behalf of the board, appreciate it so much. I'd like to, while everybody is working their tails off, I'd like to call out the athletic team who is about to embark on a 199 team soccer tournament. We've invited the rest of the world Whoa. to Wheaton Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. They ordered up is some Brazil good weather. Coming? Is Brazil coming? <laughs> um, we would, uh, yeah, it is a ton of work. And you know what? It brings us a lot of people to Wheaton. And yeah. I know they stay and they shop here and they eat here. And um, Where are it, they going to park, Mike? Well, <laughs> we, want, we also want to take the opportunity to ask for the patience and understanding of our residents who live around Seven Gables and Graff Park. We've got a, we've got a pretty sophisticated system of, of directing people and working with local law enforcement. And um, it's, it's never easy when you invite a lot of people uh, to, your, to your home, but I know the team has got it under control. And so I just wanted to, to throw that out that these guys have been, the entire team, not just guys, uh, have been working diligently to get ready for a showcase event uh, for the park district. When's so it going to be, Mike? This or Friday, something. Saturday, and Sunday. Oh, I must have missed something somewhere. As well as uh, Sensory Garden play, 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 day is oh. this, play Day is this weekend, too. And I, I want to congratulate um, uh, Margie and Linda and Vicki for, again for the party that we did have to rededicate the senior center at, into the Mary Lubko Center. That was very nice. Nice reception from the public, I thought. we had Well those. attended. Well attended. Very well attended. All right. Anything else? All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you, everybody, Thank for you. coming. Thanks for coming.